We are at number 15, I am Coach Coop. And if there's two things I've learned in this world, it's always take your own food into the cinema, obviously. Uh, if you're on a date, just cold food. A few litres of refreshments and dessert ofs, because it's a date. But the other thing is never judge an indie game by its cover or cover art. But Pixel Junk have heritage. They are no slouches when it comes to making amazing couch cult games. They're Pixel Junk Shooters 2, which is absolutely stellar, and Monsters 2. Gonna put the links in the comments because those two are kind of sleeper hits. Huge, a little bit older. Available on PlayStation 4, but impeccable in their design and look. Nom Nom is completely on par with them. Giving me so much more than just about all the side-scrolling local co platform games that I own. So sit back and allow me to tell you why Nom Nom Galaxy is the top 15 couch co-op game of all time. Strap in, not on, this one's going to be good. Its premise is completely crazy. Being a manufacturing world where you are working for a boss who is basically producing soup, cans of soup, that are getting pushed out to feed planets. And the planets have various different tastes and asks, which manifest in you having to fetch different types of vegetation to actually put into the machine to then produce the soup cans that get sent via a rocket up to said planet. But here comes the fun bit. You have to build everything from scratch, even the first tile of your base. And then from there, it's your call on how you play things out. You have to look for various pockets of vegetation and you also have to watch out. Not all of the produce is completely passive. You do have some crazy sweet corn creatures and cherry tomato monsters. There's a lot of fun to be had just exploring and looking at what the potentially procedurally generated world has offered you. When you replay this game a lot, you do notice patterns when the worlds get produced, but there's still a lot of random drops in the areas and its campaign promotes that by giving you really cool little presents in and around the map to go to as an incentive. Its second player joining is absolutely flawless as well, allowing no disruption whatsoever to you and being really slick with PSN access and you can have a guest profile. It's so perfect to split up the different tasks, have someone fetching and gathering as the massive plethora of things that you have to build suggests it's really about automation and having other things doing stuff for you you have these little walking joe like charlie robots that are epic they will carry things but they're very slow but if you have enough of them you actually just start manufacturing on a conveyor level and the fruit gets thrown in at one end of your structure and it all gets manufactured and put through the system without you even having to go near it it's so incredible as a goal to get to on a level that automation goes very crazy and the machinery that you get access to, that you research, that you develop is like sit on, ride on, massive tractor, vacuum, spaceship things. You saw the McFly hoverboard at the beginning, shotguns, swords. There is so much meta with the items and the bubblegum mechanic that I'm going to explain, which runs alongside the whole budgetary system. Those are those figures over on the left and you share it. So you will run out, you can run out of money halfway through like building a ladder that you're stuck up and someone will have to just go and get money so you can continue to build yourself back to safety. Because here's the other crux, there is full damage everywhere. This whole map suffers from gravity. That goes on structures and of course yourself. It also has the most infuriating day and night system, causing all the workers to stop. The game just shuts down, gives you a bunch of stats. Any perishable fruit or veg that you had harvested will disappear unless it's in refrigeration. That's so cool. You have to get giant fridges to put all of your material in. This game is nuts. If you've never gone near it, you're probably wondering how excavation works. And it's on the other stick. And it's just this bus saw that's got this radius on it, 360. Not too much reach. But it allows you to just go anywhere very quickly, but excavating can cause all manner of disruption with the material above it, causing landslides, avalanche style trapping material will just come down on your head. It's great. You have to then get dug out. So while all this is going on in the background, you're competing with a phantom sort of AI producer of soup who is also trying to feed the same people on the planet. And that is the percentage up on the top right. 
you have to come up with new suit combinations because the people on the planet may change their tastes halfway through the game which really can disrupt your production and you can lay down a suit manufacturing unit that's kind of a blank canvas and put in what you find and kind of predict how trends are going to go this game is so deep with how much you've got to do at the same time that you can play it for hours without even getting remotely frustrated with any of it. Death is actually handled quite well with not being massively disruptive but ruining your kind of day a bit because you'll drop all of your items that you're carrying quite a lot of money will get spilled on the ground and you'll spawn back at the base and it will just be like if you're halfway through something and you fall off a ladder by accident it does feel a bit punishing which is very cool but it doesn't disrupt the flow of what you're trying to achieve as a greater goal. What will constantly disrupt you though are the enemies that are sent by the AI player in the form of like Space Invaders style little pig's heads and funny green robots coming down from above onto your base. So you have to build turrets and defense, more automation there, they fire on their own but they require you to reload and they're not cheap. You've got a, one eye on the sky and another on all this internal and excavation mining that you're doing beneath the base. This is an absolutely perfect family game or a couples game, partner game. It is so cool on the fact that there's no major violence in it. There is a funny little rivalry story going on and the online is completely robust with some very cool options. And you can also go to a mode that just allows you an almost muck about in a generated planet and you can explore different builds start really going down some major routes but what i enjoy most is the campaign it's brilliantly structured it's totally made for two people because it does look incredible this is all five footage and it's a game that's very old but every detail is impeccable been looking at it so much lately trying to work out if they've sort of skimped on things or made things a bit shallow in areas there's nothing that you can turn your nose up with when it comes to that brilliant meta mechanic with the bubble gum and the currencies terraforming your own little base on your own little planet really gives it that ownership and if you're both putting things together you feel attached to the structure and you communicate in which directions you want to take it it's a very good game to bond and it's got so much playtime in it you're talking 200 plus hours easily 200 plus So I have been Couch Goop. I hope you enjoyed number 15. Like and subscribe if so. And of course. <laughs>